Hey guys, what's going on? This is Daryl Addison at TorpedoPot.com. Daryl Addison at TorpedoPot.com. Where we make self-growing planters. They grow your food for you without you having to be there. And you're looking at one of our planters that has about, I would say, maybe no less than 20 tomato plants in each one of these planters. We're pushing these planters um, to see how they perform under adverse conditions. And uh, I wanted to show you because the soil in which we've put our planters, when I ask you to go get your soil, your mushroom soil is going to look like this. Can you come a little closer on that, please? Take a look at that. This is what your mushroom soil is going to look like. It's going to be gritty, a lot of irregular shapes. As long as it's woody, you don't see a lot of plastic, needles, or any type of materials inside of your soil, you're pretty, you're pretty good. This soil looks actually pretty good. A lot of the decayed material looks like something that you would normally see um, in the back of your house. So from the trees and the decay that takes place, it looks like it's all natural material falling to the ground. That's what I meant by that. And so it looks really gritty. Now, after growing in the torpedo pot, this soil looks like this. This was taken from one of our torpedo pots I think we were growing um, tomatoes inside of the, the planter. Look how finely uh, reduced that soil is. You see the difference between the granular? So the question is, what is breaking down all this material? And what is giving this material the texture and the feel like nothing we've ever seen before in our life? Well, it's the torpedo pot. And even inside this, this little bit of soil that we have here, we have things that are living. Things that are living in the soil. Hi, little one. Look at that. Do you think they add to our ecological system? Yes, they do. This is part of the biotic environment that takes place inside your planter. I'm going to put you back to work, okay? Go ahead. I'm sorry. I don't mean to disturb you. <laughs> so what's happening is that these plants right now, are developing an environment, a biotic environment. It's interacting with the soil. It's interacting with the microbes. It's interacting with the, uh, the living organisms in the soil. The anthropods and so many constituents in that soil to get soil <coughs> looking like this. In other words, the torpedo pot remediates the soil and makes it better for your plant so they can live. So we have this tomato plant that's out of here. I wanted to show you because we're, we're populating, if we don't know, we, we, we did 20 last year and we were able to get some tomatoes or some of them. The cold spell came in <coughs> and it shut down our ability to grow. This year, we're gonna put it to the test. Now I've got over 20 and maybe some 30 tomatoes in some of these planters. I gotta go back, I wanna thin them out, thin them down and um, we'll see how they do. They were showing some nitrogen deficiencies because we had, oh my God, I would say well over <coughs> 10 days of rain or seven days of rain, not in a row, but five in a row and the two coming thereafter. When that water came down, it poured the ground. So anything that was on the ground at that time, that downpour was washed away, it was gone. The torpedo pot allowed the water to pass right on through. <coughs> so it can focus on trying to still develop that environment, stabilize that environment for the, your plants to grow. So come here and take a look at this. So we've given it some nitrogen because we realize there are some deficiencies that we see and we're trying to work through those deficiencies. Um, <clears throat> most of the deficiencies we're seeing is on the lower leaves. The new growth doesn't have it at this point. We hit it with a, a good 4-12-12, <coughs> forgive me, organic mix. But I want to show you this, look. Look, it's the first set of opening flowers on this plant right here. And this is what I count as my success. See, in order of the flowering, you're going to have some phosphorus and potassium, uh, both being, uh, phosphorus being created by the soil itself and its own processes, and you need potassium to cause that fruiting and blooming. And so when I see that, and let me see if we can find another one for you. <clears throat> that's the success of my growth. You know, that's how I know <coughs> my growth is successful. <coughs> Excuse me. Ah, here you go some more. So these, uh, I don't know, yeah, that should be opening up right there. 
Yeah, so we're going to see a lot more of these things. Give it time. Now, also what I'm going to do, <clears throat> I'm gonna take a step back and I'm going to uh, <clears throat> start grooming these plants. <clears throat> At this phase of their growth, they don't need these lower leaves anymore. I want them to just zoom right to my fruit. I'm not looking to bear a whole family here in my torpedo pot. Um, so I'm gonna take off the limbs that are also affected by the nitrogen deficiency because of the rain blowing the nitrogen right out the pond. Okay? So I've gotta go back and I've got to cut off these lower limbs and then we're going to do a diagnosis after that. Um, I've got this, uh, try some nitrogen again and I'm gonna do it with an organic mix. And I use, um, for my nitrogen mix, I use um, a 41212 and the company's called Raw. I spoke to Harley, me and him have spoken and we <clears throat> share the same ideas about how we should um, provide nutrigen, uh, uh, nutrition to the soil. And that's why I recommend them. It's, the product is Raw, Harley Smith, and you want the blooming formula. Okay, you don't worry about the nitrogen as much. You want more of the blooming formula. And again, we're growing a lot of plants in here, so we're gonna balance that out. Daryl Addison, torpedopart.com. Daryl Addison, torpedopart.com. Thank you, guys.